This is a convertible car, but this is a convertible computer. It's the new grid convertible. Looks like a normal notebook working away with my keyboard here, but suppose I decide I want to use a pen for input instead. I simply flip down the top, pull out the attached pen, and voila, I have an instant pen pad computer. Yes, portable computers have come a long way, baby. We have pen pads, color notebooks, mini notebooks, notebooks with cellular phones built into them. We even have portables that talk to us. Today, we'll take a look at the latest in portable computing as we show you what's new in notebooks on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and with me today is Peter Ott, Editor-in-Chief of Portable Computing Magazine. Peter, I've got a couple portable computing goodies I want to show you right now. This is the new mini-book developed jointly by Lexmark and Chips and Technologies. Listen to what this thing has. Number one, it weighs only two pounds. It runs on AA batteries for 40 hours. It has a built-in Disney sound source card, so you can even play those games on your little mini-book over here. It has a microphone in it so that you can dictate into this machine if you want a dictation machine. It has a built-in mouse key. It has two PC MCI A slots, so you can have your peripherals or your extra memory in here. And the thing's going to sell for like about $700. Pretty amazing. This black box over here is neat if you're a notebook user called the Presenter Plus. You develop a presentation on your notebook, you show up at the hotel, and there's nothing to plug it into, right? Here's a good old-fashioned TV set over here. We're watching a football game. It must be a TV set. I'll switch into video mode, and boom, I'm now converting my... VGA output into NTSC, and that's all I need to just run a presentation. Here's a presentation put together with persuasion, and I'm doing the job. Let's talk about the machines themselves, though. There are zillions of notebook computers out there. How in the world does a guy decide which one to buy, how to figure out the right machine? Well, I think there are a lot of different considerations, but first of all, I think that the, that person needs to assess their own needs. Where are they going to use the machine, and are they going to use it inside or outside? Mm -hmm. Color screen or monochrome screen, is that necessary? And then they need to figure out what kind of software they wish to run, DOS, Windows. And from that, they can then figure how much RAM they need, how large a hard drive, and some of these other considerations. Uh -huh. But there's one more thing, and I think this is very important. You really need to take a look at the comparison reports. Mm -hmm. Look at the benchmarks. How fast is this machine really? What kind of battery life is it getting? and some of the ergonomic considerations. Mm -hmm. And I think once you kind of consider all these different facets, you can make a very intelligent decision. Okay, we'll try to help out today, Peter. We're going to show you six of the best new portable computers to help you figure out which machine may be right for you. But you know, once you've bought your notebook computer, you have just begun. The real road warrior also wants one of those spiffy new battery-operated portable printers. So we checked out the latest technology in portable printers at the recent Fall Comdex. Among the many products on display at Comdex were portable printers of all sizes and quality. While the portable PC market has seen tremendous growth, the market for portable printers has not kept pace. Users have been unwilling to buy a portable printer that compromises on quality. But with these printers, there won't be any compromises. Citizen America demonstrated the world's smallest laser quality printer. The PN48 weighs just two and a half pounds and is only as big as it has to be to work. It uses thermal fusion printing technology, which means that the ink dries instantly, so it won't smear. The PN48 costs $549 for the complete package you see here. At the Lexmark booth, they showed off IBM's portable printer. It's similar to the Citizen printer and rumored to be licensed from Citizen, though neither company will confirm that. The 4070 IJ prints three pages per minute with a resolution of 360 by 360 DPI. Both the IBM and the Citizen printers use a NICAD rechargeable battery that can print 25 pages on a charge. Canon introduced the BJ10 EX portable printer here. It's a little bigger than the Citizen, weighing in at four pounds. It features bubble jet technology for high quality printing and there's an optional 30 sheet automatic feeder available to set up an office on the road. Retail price is about $500, but you'll need to add on the optional NICAD battery pack for travel. One company well known for their printers is Hewlett Packard. They introduced the HP DeskJet 500 printer based on thermal inkjet technology. One inkjet cartridge prints about 500 pages and the camcorder type battery lasts for 100 pages. 
The basic printer sells for under $600. There's an optional 50-sheet paper feeder and carrying case that holds both the printer and the portable PC. Finally, if you need a really rugged portable printer, check out the Millwright from Axonix. This dot matrix printer weighs in at 8 pounds, but with its metal case and sturdy latches, it's the only portable printer that can claim to still work after being thrown out of a Jeep at 30 miles an hour. For the Computer Chronicles from Fall Comdex, I'm Janelle Stelson. The newest acronym in portable computing is not LCD or TFT, it is PCMCIA, the new standard for credit card size peripherals. Here to show us two new portables that feature PCMCIA slots are Peter Ott of Portable Computing Magazine, back with us again, and Richard McCartney of AT&T Paradigm. Peter, first of all, in addition to your magazine, you've got this book out, which is a pretty handy dandy guide for portable users, the Mobile Office Magazine Laptop Sourcebook, and you address all kinds of portable computing issues in here. One of them is this PCMCIA business, these neat little cards we talked about briefly at the beginning. First of all, what do the letters stand for, and what's the significance of this technology? The letters stand for Personal Computer Memory Card International Association, and mm -hmm. it's important because now notebooks have unlimited expansion. It's plug-and-play flexibility, so you can add storage. You can also add a LAN adapter, a fax right. modem, or a regular modem. So it's very powerful. Okay, you've got one portable you like there, the yes. AST, which has a PCMCIA slot. Uh -huh. So show us through the machine and tell, tell us why you think it's, it's a good one. It's a good machine because it has all the latest features, uh, lots of security and so forth. It uses the Intel SL processor. Uh -huh. And I just brought it out of its uh, sleep state by pressing the suspend mode. I like this front-mounted cableless pointing device mm -hmm. and uh, here's the trackball right here and the right. mouse buttons. On this side there are two PCMCIA slots uh -huh. and it's just a, a terrific machine overall. What would, what would you use two slots for then? Well, for example, I think if you had a modem and a LAN card, you can uh -huh. plug them both and okay. have them both in at the same time so that you don't have to remove it. So it's just a, a convenience, really. All right, one quick thing. I see you got all these little button controls yes. over here. What does that do? Okay, these button controls uh, affect the contrast right here and the brightness mm -hmm. and so on. And it's kind of nice. It's very sturdy. If I, if I affect this, you can see there's a little meter that comes up on the top of the yeah. screen. And I like that. And this is the suspend button, which I pressed uh -huh, earlier. Uh -huh. And I can also turn off the backlight. So. OK, I want to turn to you, Richard, and the NCR Safari. And I guess the point in the Safari is a guy who not only wants a notebook, but wants to do a lot of communications and even wireless communications. Right? Run, run us through the Safari. Exactly right. This is the uh, NCR 3170 Safari. It's, uh, it's a little bit smaller than the original Safari. Mm -hmm. It's a true 8.5 by 11 unit. Uh, it also has a uh, built-in built mouse in. pad, finger uh -huh. pad they call it. Uh, it also it has a uh, an LCD that gives you a status of whether you're using AC right. power, battery, or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. um, importantly, the unit has the PCMCI interface. Right, and you're using the slot right now for what kind of card? I'm using the slot for our uh, Keep in Touch card, which uh -huh. is a V32Biz, V42Biz product. Uh, that supports speeds upward of 14,400 bits per second. Okay, so that tiny little thing there is the fax modem that's in there, right? This is okay, a... Now, before you do that, I mean, I have an AT&T modem, and this is about the size of it. You're going to tell me that in that tiny little card, you've got essentially what's in here? Uh, I can tell you honestly that I have more than what's in there. This, is, this unit here is a 9600. It's, uh -huh. it's been around for five, six years. This unit is a V32Biz, which is 14,400 wow. bits per second. In, a, in addition to having V42, V42Biz error corrections, and also it's a fax modem. So this okay. is a very powerful little card. All right, Richard, I have a fax machine over here, and can you show me how you could use the Safari and a cellular phone to send out a fax to somebody, even though you're not hardwired anywhere? Absolutely. Uh, we've, got the, we've got the program already loaded. We've got the PCMCIA modem card in. Okay. I'll hit enter. Uh, the and you're, you're using a cell phone over using here. Using a cellular phone. Okay, and your little fax modem over yeah. here, which is inside the slot. Here in the go off hook. Here in the other and phone dial. And my fax machine right. is here. It ring. here. Now we're hearing them handshake, handshake at 9600. Okay. Pretty soon we'll see the, the first the header page come out, but followed by the uh, followed by the main fax. Okay. Yep. There. That's making noises. Now somebody's sending me a fax. I don't know if it's uh, you. We'll find out in just well, let's a second. Hope it is. Here. Yeah. Okay. A fax coming to me from uh, from you, and here comes the full page. That's pretty. Yeah. While we're waiting for that page to come out, 
Let me ask you about security questions, Peter. One of the problems with these wonderful notebooks is they can disappear, and they are disappearing very easily. It's easier to steal than a desktop. You've got this little thing here you wanted to mention. What is that? This is the Kensington Microsaver, and it's mainly a locking device and a cable. And some of the notebooks, such as the AST, actually have this device. If you can so just that, that little slot over here. there is actually There's the, a little the slot lock on the slot side, here. and you, you so slide it in there. Stick that little guy in and, there. And then I'll just turn the yeah. key here. Okay, so it's in there. And remove it. See, now wow. it's bolted. Okay, so I could like tie this down to my leg of my desk or, sure. or something like that. That's right. Huh. And uh, it's secure, so you can leave it and uh, it'll be secure to the desk. Okay. They'd have to take the desk too. Uh, our little fax came through and fell down on the floor like faxes sometimes do. <laughs> As well put. Nice message there, thank you. So right. that really does work. I, I want to ask you one more question, Peter. The power we're seeing in these notebooks right now, I mean, they do everything. Is, is the desktop computer an endangered species? It is an endangered species, and I really, frankly, don't see any reason why sh someone should go and purchase a desktop anymore. There are a few last applications where it is appropriate, such as desktop publishing, but I think that in the very near future it will be possible to do it even yeah. on portable then. So I think the days are numbered. Okay, impressive machines. Thank yeah. you guys very much. All right, so let's say you are on an airplane clicking away on your portable, and you've got that air phone next to you, so you can call the office if you want to, but what if you want to plug your notebook into that air phone? Can you do it? Well, the answer is yes if you're on a U.S. airplane with a new feature called FlightLink. Digital radio has opened up a whole new door in the area of telecommunication for travelers. Just hook up your portable PC with an RJ11 jack, and you're all set to transfer data. Then check your figures with your on-the-ground colleague over a static free phone line. When you've finished your call, catch up on the latest stock report on your personal view screen, or relax with a video game. The system, called FlightLink, is currently available on 10 of U.S. Air's 757s. It's the brainchild of Jack Gokin, who was the original developer of the now familiar airphone. He says the quality of digital transmission is unsurpassed. Now, you come out of your laptop, out of your serial port, because we have a digital system, so we don't use a modem. We just come in at 9600, we send it down to the ground. If a company has a digital network, we interface digitally. If they have an analog system, then we put the modem at the ground and go over the uh, telephone network in an analog fashion. But from the seat to the ground is 100% uh, digital. Anything you could do in your office with your computer or fax, you'll soon be doing on the plane. But don't think it's all work and no play. Soon there will be 12 audio channels of live news and sports. Most channels will be free, but some pay per selection channels will be offered as well. And not too far in the future, we may be seeing individually selected movies or other video programming. As you'll see on the aircraft, our screens are LCDs. In the future, higher resolution screens will be developed, and everything that you see available today will also interact with screens that show movies as well. If you're wondering why you haven't seen this type of system until now, it's because it required special licensing agreements from both the FCC and the FAA. In-Flight Phone has worked on obtaining those clearances for several years and is now in the process of establishing a global digital network so that passengers will be provided with continuous clear channel service around the world. We've done that by integrating terrestrial technology with that of satellite technology. We believe that the best of both worlds is combining a system on board that will give you the ability to place calls when you're over land masses terrestrially, automatically switch the calls to satellites when you're flying over the oceans, and then switch back to other terrestrial ground station networks, even at additional frequencies. When you have digital radios, the possibilities are endless. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Janelle Stelson. Well, computing without color is like a day without sunshine, right? So you want a color notebook. Here to show us three new color portables are Andrew Watson of Compaq and Jim Bartlett of IBM. Andrew, let's start with you. And you've got two models of Compaq notebooks here. First of all, tell us what's the difference. Yes, Stuart. We've basically got uh, two products that represent some of the leading edge technologies that are available for two different classes of customer, two different classes of customer requirements. First of all, we have the Contura 325C, which is a full function, very inexpensive color notebook, which as you can see has the passive matrix color display. It's a 386-25 megahertz based mm -hmm. product. 
and it comes with your choice of either an 84 megabyte or a 120 megabyte fixed disk drive. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have the Compaq LTE Lite 425C. This is a very high performance uh, 486 mm -hmm. SL based notebook that runs about 100% faster than a comparable 386 right. product. All right, I want to focus on the screen technology because price is a big factor if you're getting into color notebooks because they are more expensive. And one thing is whether you have that passive matrix or active matrix display. And I want to help our viewers understand the value of having that, whether it's worth the extra thousand bucks or not. So on the left here, this is the passive matrix. First of all, just briefly, technically, what does that mean? What's the difference in passive matrix and active matrix? The key difference is the active matrix displays actually have transistors on each pixel uh -huh. to make sure that there is power to each pixel, whereas on the, the passive matrix displays, your power is running along the edges. So it gives you much more brightness, much more performance out of your display. Okay, now one thing I know with a passive matrix, let me for instance just move the cursor here, and you can see if I move that cursor real quick, you can see the sort of ghosting, a little bit of drag there. I mean, it's not really the what you'd see if you were looking at a, a cathode ray tube display, would you? Just, just show us the same kind of cursor movement in active matrix. You can see here your cursor moves very smoothly. Yeah, it's absolutely you don't crisp, it isn't when it? You, uh, when you move pieces around um, very, very fast. Yeah, now one thing obviously, by the way, let's get off screens for a second. You have that sort of built-in trackball up there. Show me that thing again. This is the Easy Point trackball, where the trackball is right here. We have two buttons on the back of the display so that you can actually rest your hand on the table, uh -huh. get much more control over the trackball. All right, well, I'm still using, you know, a little portable mouse trackball type thing on this one over here. Now, let, let's get into something like Solitaire if we can, so we can get a kind of more graphic, colorful uh, display here of the difference between these two display technologies. Uh, we certainly see the difference in a 486 and a 386 <laughs> going. All right, I mean, let's just sort of, let me try to move some cards around here if we can and watch this and sort of, yeah, you can really see that's, that's kind of marginal, isn't it? You can really see the, the major ghosting going on there. Do, do the same thing then on your machine. Oh, well, that's all, all the difference in the world. Isn't all it? the difference in the world. Much more yeah. rapid response from the active matrix displays. All right, now what is the cost difference? I mean, what am I saving by, by making this compromise on this kind of display? Well, the Contura 325C starts at a list price of just under $2,500. Uh -huh. And the Lite 425C starts at a list price of just over $4,000. So there's okay. about a $1,500 delta. Which is the CPU difference. CPU plus the, difference, plus the integrated difference. trackball, display difference, plus the Lite 425. Right is a docking station based system, so okay. you can actually plug it into an expansion base. All right, Jim, I want to turn to you, and you've got the new IBM ThinkPad 700C, which is your color notebook, mm -hmm. and kind of just run us through what's in this machine. All right, Stuart. Well, this is our flagship product. This product is, um, of course, has a lot of the standard features you find in many of the competitive products. I'm not going to cover those, but talk about the things that make it specifically easy to use, okay. such as the 10 and a half inch active matrix TFT well, one thing, display. That is a pretty large display, isn't it? Yes, this is 50% larger viewing area than most competitive products uh -huh. have, which makes it really helpful. It's uh, ideal for presentations. Another feature that makes it easy to use for those kinds of things is the integrated pointing device right here in the center you know, of what the What that keyboard. little red dot, explain that to me. That's called track point two. Uh -huh. And it's uh, in, in the middle of the keyboard, so you don't have to move your hands from the home row typing position to use it. And it's better than, a ty than either a uh, mouse or a so trackball. So could you show us, you would put your index finger, Put your say, finger on there. it, and you were able, would be able to move the, I don't know if we have okay, a. Okay, you don't have a mouse up there, a cursor up there anywhere. Okay, well, we can, I can show it to you okay. if we get a mouse pointer, but yeah. that would allow you to move this anywhere on the, uh -huh. on the display. And then there you sort of mouse clicks You have two there. buttons on the, on the front, okay. so it works for either left-handed or right-handed people, uh -huh. and they don't have to move from the home row typing position. Okay. But around that is a full-size, full-function uh, uh, IBM keyboard. Across the front of the unit, uh, we have a front-loading floppy disk drive mm -hmm. instead of from the side, so there's no more elbowing on the airplanes, yeah. and a front-loading uh, uh, battery as well. The battery is uh, four hours or more of battery life uh, using the advanced power management techniques, standby, resume, and so forth. Also, the hard disk drive is removable from the front. And on the side, we have a communication slot that supports three different communication options, mm -hmm. up to 14.4 kilobaud uh, fax data modems that are also capable of being plugged into a cellular telephone. Um, the whole system is modular, so not only can the 486 low power processor be upgraded, but you can add a math coprocessor chip, uh -huh. the user can upgrade memory, it can also upgrade the hard disk drive all without tools. 
Okay, now this removable hard disk drive is something unique to this machine. I want you to show me how you can actually take All the right. drive out. Well, I'm going to put the machine to sleep. Okay. Take the battery out, like so. Mm -hmm. And then by removing this cover on the front, I can just grab a hold of this and take the hard disk drive out. Uh -huh. Now, the reason that I took the battery out first is those are interlocked so that it prevents anyone from accidentally trying to take the hard disk out while, while it's spinning. The up, yeah, yeah. So that I can put that back in, put the battery back in. And by the way, there's a bridge battery which maintains power while I'm changing the batteries. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So when I put this battery back in, I should have all my data the way it was. Right. I'll go ahead and I'm just gonna leave that cover off just okay, for sure. expediency here. I should be able to wake okay. up. And, uh, and what's the price then on the ThinkPad 700C? This is uh, street priced under $4,000 today. Mm -hmm. And there's a comparable product with a monochrome display that's street priced under $3,000. Okay. Andrew, let, let me ask you. We talked in the first segment with the other guys here about, I mean, the, the, your machines are also powerful. I mean, you have 486 color, everything you could do. I mean, why should anybody want to buy a desktop from you guys anymore when you've got these powerful notebooks? Uh, well, that's a good question. Uh, there are a lot of examples where uh, customers are going to a portable computer as their only machine, yeah, yeah. especially when you have desktop expansion sure, capabilities sure. as you do with the Lite 20, uh, 425. Yeah. But when uh, people need more slots, they like right. larger displays, they need absolutely the more, most performance they can buy, 486, 66 megahertz, yeah. uh, half a gigabyte of mass storage, you still can't get there in an a 8.5 sure. by 11, 6 pound yeah. product. Jim, you were going to add something to that. I was just going to say something similar. We offer a docking station for this product uh -huh. because people want to be able to come in and with one motion be able to connect into everything in their yeah, own office yeah. environment, their network, all of their peripheral items, and we have a ThinkPad docking station for the 700C. Uh -huh. So you both have docking stations where you just mm -hmm. shove it in and do the whole thing. That's sure. what it's coming to, isn't it? Absolutely. Sure. All right, thanks very much. That is our look at portable computing. Stay tuned now for this week's computer news on Random Access. In the random access file this week, Compaq announced it will start selling its computers through several mail order companies in an attempt to beef up business again. Compaq increased its share in the PC market from 12 to 23 percent last summer by dropping prices and starting the PC price war. Zenith cut prices on all of its notebook PCs this week. Prices fell by as much as $550 on the Zenote series, as well as the Z Sport and ZDS. 600 NL series. The company also announced a special year-end promotion on selected desktop models. Apple Computer is planning to provide its own information service to computer users called Apple Online Services, or AOS. It will be part of Apple's personal interactive electronics division. Apple will use the America Online Services platform for this service. Lotus began shipping its latest upgrade for 123 for DOS. Release 3.4 features Lotus's smart icon technology, providing one-click access to frequently used spreadsheet commands. Other enhancements include a new install and additional 3D and table graph types. The new release retails for $600. Upgrades to current users and Quattro Pro owners sell for $150. Taking a look at the best-selling home software titles this week, according to Egghead Software, Managing Your Money tops the list on both the PC and the Mac. Print Shop and the Micro Kitchen Companion are also among the best-selling Mac products. Fujitsu says it has developed the world's first 256 megabit DRAM chip. The chip boasts a capacity four times larger than any present DRAM chip. Franklin Electronic, known for its handheld spell checkers, plans to go into the digital book publishing business. The first title will be the Trade Line Database, covering stock performance. Other titles range from commercial applications to consumer topics. Franklin intends to use flash ROM chips, which can be electronically updated. Change comes slowly to institutions like Harvard. The catalog for the university's massive libraries is still on paper cards, dating back to Abraham Lincoln's first term. But Harvard plans to go digital. They've hired the Online Computer Library Center to transfer their complete catalog to computer. The project will take six years and cost $15 million. And finally, you might want to think about the keywords on your resume the next time you're job hunting. President-elect Bill Clinton's transition team is scanning incoming resumes into a database so they can narrow the field of some 100,000 applicants down to the 4,000 political jobs they have to fill. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Stelson.
Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated plus background information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a subscription to the newsletter, call 1 800 366 9484 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes. All orders include a free software program for auditing software use and information on the definitive guide to keeping your organization's software legal.